What's up? How are you guys this weekend? We have another Pinterest girly. And if you guys are unfamiliar with that term, uh, Pinterest is this like social media site where girls post their like ideal lifestyle, like artsy stuff, like really clean ideal lifestyle. Like that's what all these background pictures remind me of. And it's kind of a funny analogy because you know if these girls care much about making their lives look that perfect on social media, you know they're messed up mentally, just like uh, a lot of these health obsessed people think they're eating healthy, you know, restricting their calories, starving themselves. They look good on the outside, but they're destroying themselves on the inside. So um, maybe the uh, Pinterest girlies need some mental and physical help, but Today we're going to see what she eats. I have genuinely spent what feels like so much of my life trying to understand what a healthy relationship with food looks like. I've delved into the vast world of nutrition, wellness, and diet trends. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of what I eat in a day videos where people claim that drinking greens on an empty stomach changed their lives or that cutting carbs out of their diet miraculously clear their skin and the list goes on and on so she's already painting herself as an expert by the way i've had like a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube now for i don't know a few years and I, I know that youtube doesn't doesn't really like me that much and they probably know that the first thing i would do if i got this plaque was like heat it up to a thousand degrees and cook a steak on it but i guess that's why i'm not getting one it's easy to get caught up in the promise of quick fixes and a one-size-fits-all solution, but I've come to realize that the path to a good relationship with food is unique for every single one of us. Battling to find a good relationship with food can be so challenging, and it's deeply a personal journey. In today's world, we're bombarded with conflicting messages about what's healthy, what isn't, how should we look. It's so easy to fall into the trap of viewing food as the enemy rather than what it actually is, right? So it's a source of nourishment. There, there's... Dude, how could you work out and have your dog crawling all over you when you're working out? I would throw that thing against the wall. Um, you know what bothers me? When people call animals handsome. Like, look, you could call a dog cute. You could call a dog cuddly. But you can't call a dog, like, look, you can't call a dog handsome, all right? That implies that you want to play with it. Like, it, it's just, oh, he's so handsome. It's a dog. It's not handsome, Okay. You could, anything but handsome is okay. All right, that's my little rant, but um, you know, there's also a significant. I'll, I'll continue with my pet rant. There's also a significant difference between people. I mean, most people let their pets inside the house, but you know, the cleanliness and stuff versus having an animal inside outside is is drastic. Meant pleasure and comfort. Embarking on this journey is not just about the food that we put on our plates. It's about cultivating self-love, compassion towards ourselves, and realizing that perfection is not and will never be the goal. Instead, it's about focusing on creating sustainable eating habits that we enjoy, that we can maintain. It becomes a lifestyle, a way of nurturing our bodies and minds. Now, I think we can all agree that the constant stream of diet trends and transformation stories can be so overwhelming. How enlightening. How enlightening but it's so crucial to remember that there is no unique approach to nutrition and that's okay we are all so beautifully unique and what works for one person might not work for the other one it's truly just about working this intuitive eating this unique have to figure it out thing is is really nonsensical when you understand that every group of human beings had similar dietary factors uh, weston price's book nutrition and physical regeneration is an excellent example of this because whether it's the Scottish Gaelics eating oats and fish, the Swiss Lochental, they were eating like dairy products and rye bread. You know, you have all different groups of people that had the same consistent factors in their diet, which is presence of animal protein and animal nutrition and presence of some type of energy source, typically plant-based carbohydrates and starches with our bodies and understanding our own hunger and fullness cues it's about appreciating the wisdom of our bodies which know exactly what they need at the end of the day i mean 
mean, out of all the days of eating we've seen, this might be one of the best breakfasts. I'm, I'm trying to jog my memory, but like, th this is about as good as you can get. You know, you have bread, starch, caloric density. You have dairy products, some fat, healthy fats. You have eggs, animal protein, cholesterol. I mean, granted, not everything is organic in the highest quality. That's a whole different discussion. Figs are relatively low inflammatory. You know, you're getting some fiber, you're getting some sugar, some nutrition. But not one thing in this meal is nonsense. You know, no vegetables, no seeds, nothing like that's unnecessary and inflammatory. So for breakfast today, we're having toast with ricotta and figs. And I actually saw like a YouTube short, I think from Emily Mariko. Look, if she fed it to me, I'd probably eat it. I'm not going to lie. And she was doing that. I know I used to do this with like goat's cheese, but she put ricotta. And I couldn't stop thinking about it this morning, so I had to make it. Mmm. So good. Getting vegan vibes. Mmm, so good. Yeah, this is really I Pinterest girly. Like, the presentation on the food. Croissants, which are just literally all over TikTok, all over Instagram. Finally, so I booked it last weekend, and they only had availability to go today, so I'm going today. And I'm so excited. So that's going to be my little morning snack. I didn't hear what she said. And yeah, I hope it tastes good. I'm really scared that like it's just like super dry and hard because I don't know. I guess it's really hard to cook it, right? But let's see. I'm wearing these jeans from Good American. This top is Abercrombie. This is Abercrombie. And yeah, let's go get a giant croissant. Want to go walkies? You want to go walkies? He doesn't believe me. It's like you're saying we're gonna go walkies for half an hour and you take so long, woman. I'm sorry. Honestly, this bag, I feel like it doesn't do it justice, right? It is much bigger, but the croissant has been secured. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, we're finally doing a little taste test. Okay, like Pinterest girly that's that skinny doing this to me screams eating disorder, but I mean. Oh my gosh. Mmm. It actually tastes so nice. Probably because look, like we saw her work out. We see how skinny she is. If she's doing this every day, she's not going to look like that. I feel like the inside of it will be way softer and nicer, but it's actually super tasty. I'm surprised. <laughs> Embracing variety has also been such a pivotal part of my journey. Our world has so many flavors, cultures, and cuisines. There's so much to I feel like that's something like when you're blasted out of your mind at 2 a.m. that you would pre-order for the next day. Like, what's up with the giant croissant? Join exploring this diversity. So don't ever let one meal or one day define your entire relationship with food because that's part of I, I mean, croissants are relatively healthy. You know, it's just butter and flour, really. So, you know, I mean, and I remember when I, uh, when we got raided by the USDA at Frankie's Ranch Meat, I was so stressed out for like two weeks. The only thing I can stomach was like those French pastries, just like the butter and the bread, lightly sweet. That's literally all I ate for like two weeks. So it's it's not that bad for you. The only thing you got to be careful of, you know, there, there's no animal protein and it's pretty depleted in B vitamins. But it's like it's one of the least worst things depending on where you're getting the croissant from. Like a homemade croissant, which is flour and butter is good. But a lot of these store-bought croissants, you got to be careful because they'll use like vegetable seed oils and fortified enriched flour, which is actually bad for you. Part of the journey. There is no single food group that is the enemy here. It's recognizing that food is not just fuel, but a way to connect with our bodies, celebrate life. No single food group is the enemy? I disagree. I think that purple sweet potato is about to destroy your liver, but prove me wrong. And find so much joy in nourishment. Having purple sweet potato, which I discovered like last week, and it tastes a million times better than any other sweet potato I've tried. Um, I don't know how many there are, but I've only tried another one, so maybe that's not true. And...
you have to keep in mind when a food is colorful, when it's really dark colored, that generally means there's compounds in it giving it that color. Th there's exceptions. Like if you bake bread and the bread's brown, it's because you caramelized it, you know? But, you know, the reason meat is red is, okay, there's iron in it, there's this, there's that. The reason salmon is orange, okay, there's carotenes, there's this, there's that. You have to understand why the food's that color and are those compounds going to be harmful to your body? In the case of red meat or pork or venison or really dark colored meat, you know the minerals in that and the nutrients of that and everything in that. You know that's okay for your body. But in the case of the sweet potato, what's what's really in there? Tomato salad, salmon, and then this like lentil dal that's like left over from two days ago. So yeah, and I just put butter in this and it I tastes... Mean, I mean, just, just white rice with the salmon is healthier. This is literally my life. Just throwing in the bowl every second of the day. Anyways, I've just been sitting here for like <laughs> I've just been sitting here on the floor on like my little coffee table. The some of these young influencers need to just work a real job before before starting their YouTube channel to build it builds a little character, you know? Just editing and working on the podcast a little bit, which when you see this video, if this video ever comes out, because literally everything I film I never post. Um yeah, so it should be out by now. It's 5 p.m. now, and it's time for a snack. I, I think she needs some more salmon. Her brain might fire up more. I just don't eat snacks. I will never understand. I will never understand. Like, I literally need to eat half a meal before dinner. Otherwise, I will starve. But... So I'm just going to use some of the croissant that I have. Obviously, I didn't eat all already. That would be concerning for my stomach. Um, and I'm gonna just like put it with cheese and ham and then toast it like a little toasty. I love doing that. And I don't know what else I feel like eating. Probably like some yogurt and some nuts or something like that. Bro, just you have a dog crawling all over you all day. You're putting your hands in its mouth. Like it's not it's not sanitary, dude. It's not sanitary. Like, look, you guys have pets. That's great. You can love, but it's just it's not sanitary. Here's my little setup. Let me show you. Yeah, so I'm just been like recording, editing, and then editing also on my phone the video that I'm gonna post tonight on TikTok. So yeah, let's go make a little snack. I have been filming what I eat in a day videos for a couple of months now, and it's important to clarify See, that I'm not what's up with this croissant, dude? The perfect diet it's like her boyfriend, whatsoever. her new boyfriend, the, the dog and the croissant. The is an illusion, and it can lead us down a path of endless comparison and dissatisfaction with ourselves. What I share in these videos is not a universal prescription, but a reflection of just my own personal journey, my preferences, and my needs. It's the perfect diet for myself, not necessarily. How can you, like, be so condescending and self-righteous and then put this little warning in there? Like you're preaching, oh, I've explored everything. I know everything. You need to be intuitive. You need to listen to your body. There's no right diet. Everyone's unique. And then you're like preaching all this information. Then you're like, oh, by the way, uh, this is here's a disclaimer. So like, what is the legal thing? Do these people all have lawyers? Like it's, it, it's like. Necessarily for anyone else. You're trying not to get blowback. You, you bought a croissant the size of your body is, and you're making and diet videos. To inspire you to be able to find that place for yourself. Like, okay. can we take a, sta a step back here? A realistic, what I eat in a day, how I transform my body, intuitive eating. And she buys a, <laughs> a freaking croissant that's bigger than me. Bro, I, I'm, lose I'm losing my mind because like, it, are these people crazy? Am I crazy? What's going on? Like, in what world do you think it's a good idea to buy this giant croissant in this video? What, like, that's something you would do for, like, a crazy eating video or, like, a shock video. Like, you're trying to show people what you do to be healthy and normal and stuff, and you're buying the biggest croissant that's ever lit. Like, all right, fuck, I can't. A place where there's no strategy. Zero sense. But a state where you're thriving because you are nourishing your body, and your body will thank you. Remember, it's always about progress and not perfection.
I mean, Greek yogurt, honey, and fruit is good enough. It's healthy. This is literally what I've been doing while my croissant heats up. Eating my boyfriend's leftover meatballs and gnocchi that he had for lunch. Like, what she's showing us versus her body composition, like, as I said earlier, like, eating disorder. Like, there's no way she does this every day. She's actually getting some good mm -hmm. foods and decent calories. Like, ham and cheese croissant. I mean, it's a, she put ham and cheese on the chocolate. It's, it's a chocolate croissant. All right. So, like, ham and cheese croissant, I can get down with. But I'm guessing that's chocolate on the outside. So, I don't know. But, you know, ham, cheese, animal nutrition. Healthy protein. I mean, depends on the quality. Croissant, we said, is good. It's it's a pretty healthy meal. Uh, you probably want some fiber or something to kind of break things up. And and healthy in a sense of like giving the body what it needs calorically and nutritionally, vitamins and minerals. Maybe like some pickles from Frankie Strange Foods would go well with that. Okay, let's taste this. Excuse me. I want to try the one with ham and cheese first. I'm sorry. I think if she just had like rice with her lunch, she probably wouldn't need the extra meal. I mean, this is a decent amount of food, you know, compared to what these girls mm -hmm. normally eat. She looks kind of like that, um, that popular fitness girl. What's her name? Sarah Safari or something. She looks pretty much like her. Snacking more. I have now changed into my pajamas. for. I mean, dark chocolate covered almonds. I don't really speak a lot about nuts and seeds, but, you know, we do have macadamia nuts on the foods website. I just think if you're going to have any, like, nut fat source as a snack, you know, Macadamia nuts being predominantly saturated fat, they're just the healthiest choice by far. It's it's not it's not even comparable. For the night, this pajamas from the White Company. They make the cutest pajamas, honestly. I love buying one like every year, and yeah, they're super super soft, super comfy, and they always have like some cute designs. So, anyways, I also put pimple cream on my face because. I'm breaking out so bad. I don't know why. Like, I don't know if it's because I've eaten something, but I've... Could it be? Could it be the candida from the croissant that's the size of your body? <laughs> uh, I mean, if she was wearing EMF protective clothing and had more probiotics in the diet, she wouldn't be breaking out. Obviously, you know, there there does need to be some dietary adjustments in general for this to be better, whether it's going organic or higher quality or maybe restricting certain products for certain periods of time. Yeah, like if she had a glass of kefir for breakfast with that meal and then maybe with the croissant, if she had, you know, some more probiotics or something, there needs to be probiotics to help her digest the carbs and the starch. I feel like I haven't changed anything about my diet, so I don't know, maybe I'm just really stressed. Who knows? Anyways, um, yeah, so tonight I'm going to make a lasagna. I haven't made a lasagna for so long. I feel like I used to make it a lot when I was at Imperial last year because it was just like such a quick and easy meal. Um, but yeah, I haven't made it in a really long time, so I'm really excited to actually make it. And the thing is, I actually do it with... Let me show you all the ingredients. Um, ow. Uh, that I actually use. So I'll use um, this. I'll touch a little bit on the the acne stuff before we get into this. This is weird, dude, because like her first meal was good. Perfect. The second meal was kind of bad because like the sweet potato and the salad and the nonsense. The third meal was good. And now this meal looks bad. So she's alternating between like what I consider good stuff that like even the Amish would make for themselves, like old school, calorically dense home cooking versus like vegan nonsense that people think is healthy but it's actually not there she's like caught in between i guess but mild acne is a pretty good sign of moderate liver damage and what i mean by that is it's going to take you several years if you know exactly what you're doing to be healthy now for me you know i only at this point now i'm over 30 years old have i been able to clear up my skin you know, for five, six years as a kid, teenager, young adult, I always had bad acne. I took Accutane, destroyed my liver, um, on and off carnivore diet. I've always, I always had cystic acne, horrible, bad acne. 
really up until the past few years that I've been actually healing my liver. So if you're getting mild acne, that's, that's a good sign that, you know, you really need to figure out and dial things in because if not, if you keep pushing through these diets for years and years and years, and you still have acne, still have acne, still have acne, maybe it gets worse, maybe not, but you're already at the point where it's going to take you a long period of time to recover your health because, you know, people, most people can eat whatever they want and not get acne. So there, there's a pretty reasonable amount of liver damage that's already done if you're breaking out at all. This, if it focuses, hello. So it's like made out of lentil, 100%. There's no wheat in it. And honestly, it changes the flavor so much. And I genuinely prefer it so much more. Like, not that I don't eat yeah, um, the regular pasta. I mean, as you guys know, I eat pasta every single night. But yeah, I feel like this changes the lasagna so much. And I honestly really love it. But yeah, so this is the veggie that I put. Um, I honestly change it just depending on what I have. So tonight I'm just going to do like half an onion because this onion's really big actually. Like a carrot, then a pepper, and I'm going to put some spinach in it. This is the minced meat. And then I just mix all of that together. Add the tomato sauce, done. And then you just layer it with the, um, with the, what? With the bechamel sauce. And then you just put cheese on top. It's actually super easy. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to preheat the oven. Uh, 180 this is the pimple cream that I've been using probably for like five months now and genuinely this is the best one I have <gasps> I mean you know maybe the pimple and the acne stuff is something you should keep outside of the diet video because you don't you know if you're, you're trying to sell a lifestyle you don't want to say oh yeah this is what I eat and do and it's so good for you but you'll get acne here's my pimple cream like it's kind of not the smartest marketing uh, not the smartest marketing play. Uh, it is real cheese, but <laughs> I think I think just regular lasagna would be healthier, dude. This this chick is a bit out there. And genuinely, this is the best one I have found. I have tried so so many, and this is so. Do I need to try your diet to get the acne first, and then I buy the acne cream that I've been using? Okay, but yeah, here's the bechamel sauce that I'm talking about. This is the one that I always use. Um, I feel All right, look, look, she's got nine different packaged things in, in, that she's making into a meal instead of doing homemade stuff or doing it herself. So the additives, the chemicals, the things on the side, she's not going organic. There, there's a lot of negatives to this meal. It's, it's really, you know, I could talk, you could probably talk for an hour breaking down the negatives of every single component of this meal. If it was organic, the list would be shorter. I feel like here in London, there's not that many. So this is just the one that I found that tastes the best. Um, one day I will make it myself. I haven't brushed up on my cooking recently, but I think bechamel is basically just a roux with flour and butter, and then you put milk in it. And then if you add cheese, it turns it into something else. So it's a very basic French sauce that you should probably make on your own because something like that definitely has like preservatives or like... Uh, thickening agents to keep maintain the texture tough but that day is not i know that it can seem so overwhelming and sometimes so impossible but i'm here to tell you that it is very much possible and finding balance can truly become a reality in all of our lives in my what i eat in a day videos i always try to be as authentic as realistic as possible not just swimming perfectly nutritious meals but also all the sweet treats i have authentic so and realistic is that why you buy seven pound croissants every day because I do love something sweet basically at all times of the day. So the same way your body might sometimes need a nice big filling salad, sometimes it needs a few big cookies and that's okay. I mean, if you're always craving sweet, you know, it's, it's a candida overgrowth because the candida is trying to detox your liver. So that's what you're craving. What you have to do to fix that is, you know, get them probiotics, keep the candida in check and detox the liver with soluble fiber. It's not a short term thing. I mean, at least she's got plenty of animal fat and protein, but you definitely don't want to combine it with, uh, you know, when you combine animal fat and protein with these high carotene vegetables, it's not that great for your liver. Um, at least the regular lasagna has wheat pasta, which is starch and fiber, and at least kind of balances the meal out. Here's dinner for tonight. Let's do a little taste test. Oh my gosh, this actually looks so good. Out of 10. 
You need to make this. Time to get some seconds. Hey, yummy. Time for dessert while we watch Virgin River. Actually, today we only watched one episode, so that is an improvement. Um, but yeah, yeah we probiotics also really help with histamine and her diet. I mean, her diet in general is pretty high in histamine. You know, she's having chocolate now. She had ham and cheese. She's having some like supermarket dairy products. She's having a lot of prepackaged foods. Probably could really do with the probiotics. We all know that we're gonna watch like 20 episodes tonight, so. Yeah, I know. I think that's what he was searching for before. Anyways. Bro, I, I, I can't eat like chocolate at all. <laughs> it keeps me awake with the caffeine. I can't imagine having it before I go to bed. Yeah, okay. We are gonna have, well, I don't know about him, but we're gonna have dates with chocolate and a little tangerine. That is all for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to take care of yourselves, and I will see you all very soon. All right, I'll be nice. I won't. I won't talk about the boyfriend's appearance. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I think overall her diet's actually really good compared to what we see. You know, she has she has a lot of animal protein in the diet. She definitely needs to go organic and increase the quality on a few things. And uh, but 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 just from like uh. Uh, quick fix perspective, you know, just just having some rice and maybe a starch source with lunch instead of all that stuff with the salmon would be much healthier. Like, omit omit the purple sweet potato, omit the salad and and the salsa, the side dishes, whatever she had. Just have like salmon with rice and maybe beans or some type of vegetable. Don't don't do the dark colored stuff. That's weird and unusual. The croissant. I mean, I can't complain about the croissant. Like, but. It, like there's nothing wrong with the croissant it's just i don't understand why she bought such a big one you know if she just had like a, a ham and cheese croissant sandwich it would have been kind of normal uh and then yeah for dinner just instead of again the, the vegetable stuff uh, just having the regular grains would be a bit healthier so that, that that'd be the first step in the right direction and then uh and then the the organic and food omission overall to actually fix our health and the probiotics and stuff. That's a whole different story, but hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, maybe you can, uh, get some Pinterest girly inspo. I don't know. I'm, I'm losing it guys. But if you go to frank you can support me through all my businesses. Check out all my interesting products. If you do want to follow, uh, like a healthy diet that will actually fix any problems you've been having, definitely check my day of eating, check my food pyramid video, all that stuff, frank-defile.com. I'll see you guys soon.